The Fed cannot fight this inflation. The markets have got that wrong. In fact, I don't even think the Fed is going to try to fight it. I think the Fed knows that if it fights inflation, it's going to lose. So it's not even going to fight. Now, it will bluff. It will talk a good game. So it never actually has to get in the ring and get knocked out. So it's going to pretend that it's got these tools and it's going to use them, but it can't use them. If you remember what it took to end the inflation of the 1970s, and again, the inflation we're about to experience is going to be worse. It's already starting off worse early in this decade than it started early in the 1970s. But what happened in 1980 to finally break the back of inflation and to restore confidence in a sinking dollar and to break a gold bull market where the price of gold went from $35 an ounce to $850, what it took to bring that to an end was the combination of Paul Volcker with 20% interest rates and Ronald Reagan with government is the problem, the free market is the solution. We are nowhere near that type of combination today. We have the polar opposite of Volcker in Powell and maybe the opposite of Reagan in, in Biden. So we're going to have loose money. We're going to have bigger government bigger deficits, and even if Powell wanted to allow interest rates to rise to 20%, how's he going to do it? We saw what happened a few years ago when they raised them to 2.5%. Everything collapsed. Well, if the economy couldn't withstand 2.5%, then it certainly can't withstand it now because the economy is far more levered up today than it was in 2018. The U.S. government has much more debt. Corporations have much more debt. Americans have much more debt. The markets are far more overvalued. Stock market's a bigger bubble. The real estate market's a bigger bubble. So we're far more vulnerable to a rise in interest rates than we were then. And look how much damage a small rise did then. Imagine what an even bigger rise, a rise that's actually high enough to fight inflation would do. That's why they're not going to do it. So the fact that the markets are worried that the Fed is going to fight inflation with an aggressive or any type of monetary policy that somehow is going to be negative for the for gold and positive for the dollar is, is completely wrong. And I think that relatively soon, the markets are going to start to price in the fact that they've got it wrong, that the Fed is not going to be able to fight inflation, that even if it tried to fight inflation, it would lose and therefore it won't. And so the Fed is going to go from assuring the markets that it will fight inflation to assuring the markets that we don't have to worry about inflation, that inflation is a good thing, that inflation is necessary part of prosperity and economic growth, that it's a, it's a trade-off uh, that's worth making because jobs are important, because economic growth is important, because all these government programs are important. And we're not going to sacrifice all that over some number. You know, we don't have to keep inflation as at 2%. All right, 3%. Okay, 4%, 5%. That's not that bad. That's what they're going to try to tell us. At the same time, I'm sure they will probably go back uh, to the drawing board on the CPI and figure out a way to make the number even smaller so that they can cover up um, the results of their inflation. And again, you got to remember, Inflation is a tax. That's really what it boils down to is a tax because the government has two ways of paying for stuff. It can do it honestly through taxation. It can also legitimately borrow money, but borrowing money simply obligates future taxpayers to pay higher taxes. So that's also taxation. But the other way that government can get money if they don't want to do it honestly is they can print it. You know, or they can ask the Federal Reserve to print it, or the way we do it, the U.S. government sells treasuries, and then the Federal Reserve buys them in the marketplace, preventing interest rates from going up and funding all this government spending. But now the government is not spending the money it collected in taxes. It's spending the money the Fed printed. But that doesn't mean taxpayers are off the hook. That doesn't mean we get a bunch of government for nothing just because the Fed printed the money to pay for it instead of us sending our money to Washington 
because when the Fed prints money and gives it to the government, the Fed is effectively stealing our purchasing power. They're making all the dollars that we hold less valuable. So the price of everything goes up as a result. And that increase in price, in which we call inflation,